This year, Hatterberg in pinch hitting rolls is uh, one for five. 269 average. He's gone deep a dozen times. Now the pitch. Swung on. There's a high drive. It's way back. Right center field. Stop on the inside. And it's 20. It's just a victory. It's a victory. This is the real moment everyone remembers from the movie Moneyball. A team of has-beens and unwanted celebrating their 20th consecutive win in front of their home fans. And in the backdrop of this electricity is the Oakland Coliseum, a stadium that personifies its occupants, a building which has not only stood the test of time, but has far far outlived it. Once the curtains close and the lights are shut off, you realize that this place has indeed gone beyond its use. It's archaic configuration obsolete for baseball in a town abandoned by football. Every time it's tried to be replaced, rebuilt, or repurposed, that has met a tragic and unfulfilling end. The sad story of why Oakland is left with the Coliseum is coming up right after this. The story of the Oakland Alameda Coliseum begins in 1964, when ground was broken and a $25 million stadium was constructed to house the American Football League's Oakland Raiders. A structure with a playing surface below sea level, the Coliseum was built not only to give the Raiders a legit home, but also to attract a baseball team to move to the East Bay. That happened in 1968, when the Kansas City Athletics moved west to occupy the Coliseum and test its ability to truly house two sports. What followed for the A's in their bizarrely sized new concrete kingdom was a vast and nearly immediate success. Hall of Famers like Raleigh Fingers, Catfish Hunter, and Ricky Henderson, four World Series rings, and later, the birth of Moneyball. The Coliseum is one of the more unique baseball stadiums. It contains the most foul ground of any other park in the MLB and was originally built with a backstop that reached 90 feet behind the catcher, eventually reduced to just 60 when it became clear that the stadium was effectively a base runner's wet dream. The Coliseum's 1996 expansion tacked on some 12,000 seats atop Mount Davis. Named after the Raiders' late owner, but the controversial add-on made the Coliseum look more football than it did baseball, removing a scenic hill from the skyline in center field. The extra capacity sometimes isn't even open during baseball games, barring a playoff appearance. Mount Davis is usually covered in tarp whenever the A's take the field. It's not a traditional ballpark, but what it lacks in convention it makes up for in character and immense charm both in terms of the building itself and the people who inhabit it, including the raucous bleacher crew that fills the stands in right field. Meanwhile, the Raiders found their own success for decades, two Super Bowl rings of their own as well as characters patrolling the grounds like Kenny Stabler and Al Davis. But in between their occupation of the Coliseum, the Raiders moved to Los Angeles for 13 seasons after Al Davis tried and failed to improve the building. Finally, after not coming to an agreement for a new stadium in LA, Davis brought the team back to their old stomping grounds, a return to the black hole and the many crazed, shoulder-spiked Raiders fan. The black hole bred a special type of aficionado, doctors and lawyers who would dress up in macabre Halloween-type costumes and toss beer on whichever Bronco or Chief hit the end zone. This stadium has had plenty of critics, but plenty of loyalists as well. Jack Nikas of the New York Times called it cheap, gritty, and fun. Baseball's last dive bar. The Coliseum may be a concrete eyesore, but it's a great, ungentrified place to watch a game. But how is it that an old, crumbling stadium for all of its character and charm still stands in 2020 despite the many attempts to replace it with a newer building? How has the last dual-use stadium stood while others have been imploded and met their dusty deaths? Try a new play to get a new ballpark built. That's right. KPX 5's Emily Turner live in Oakland with the offer that the team just made to the city. Emily? We will divide the attempts on the Coliseum's life by team, the Raiders and the A's, as each franchise has set out to kill the Coliseum like Bullet Tooth Tony and failed miserably. 
I shoot you, you go down! While they still resided in Oakland, many proposals to exit the Coliseum were attempted and went awry. Prior to the end of their lease in 2013, the Raiders went to the city proposing a new $800 million stadium in the same dirt. The Raiders would have paid $300 million, the city another $300, and the NFL would loan them another $200. The city of Oakland wasn't on board, not wishing to foot the bill with the looming exit of the Golden State Warriors and the A's threat to take their business to nearby San Jose. After that failure, owner Mark Davis set his sights for San Antonio, proposing a move that would send them to the Alamo Dome temporarily until they could erect a more permanent home. That went limp too. In 2015, the Raiders even teamed up with the rival Chargers to get a city-approved stadium built in Carson, California that would have marked their second move to SoCal. Does this stadium design look familiar? The NFL decided they would prefer the Rams in LA to the Raiders and thus silver and black were once again stuck in the bay. Finally, the Raiders decided to hit an untapped market, the state of Nevada, working to move their team to the unoccupied desert. The Golden Knights of the NHL proved in 2017 that Las Vegas could love a sports team despite the city's transient nature, and the Raiders' new home was finally approved, ending their stay in Oakland once and for all in 2020. Before they could officially move, however, the Raiders faced trouble back in Oakland. The city sued for damages and unpaid bills, adding up to an alleged $220 million, which spurred the team to find temporary lodging. The options were the Giants Oracle Park denied, the 49ers Levi Stadium denied, UNLV's Sam Boyd Stadium too small and terrible. Oakland and the Raiders eventually reconciled and the team, despite knowing it was actively moving, played three awkward seasons in the Coliseum before packing it up to Vegas. The sun has likely set on football in the Bay Area, at least for the ironically named Black Hole, as the multi-billion dollar palace that's been built in Vegas plans on retaining the Raiders maybe forever or until you know everyone there is dead. A sad end to football in Oakland, for sure. And now for the building's lone tenant, an even sadder tale of failure. The Athletics made their first bid to leave the Coliseum 15 years ago in 2005, proposing a 35,000 seat park a little north of the current site. While modest, the owners of the proposed building site chose not to sell, leaving the A's shit out of luck. For the next three years, the A's tried to build a new home called Cisco Stadium in an empty patch of land in Fremont, just north of San Jose, and a short trip from the Sharks home ice. The town rejected them, so the A's focused their sights on an aggressive partner to build Cisco, the city of San Jose. It looked like a legitimate option until the San Francisco Giants felt threatened, opposing the move on the grounds that San Jose was their territory. For six more years, the battle raged on, finally being resolved in 2015 when the US Supreme Court rejected the move citing a long-standing antitrust exemption. That, of course, angered the city of San Jose, whose lawyers said, to bar the A's from moving is to reduce consumer welfare for the sole benefit of a competing producer, the Giants. This is precisely the harm that antitrust law is designed to prevent. Yeah, you're damn right. What sucks even more for the A's is that in 1990, when the Giants wanted to move to San Jose, the A's actually granted them permission, and in the end, those concessions were turned around and used against them and their benevolence. The ruling ended the dreams of a Bay Area move. So in 2018, the team announced plans for a 34,000 seat space age waterfront park located in Oakland Port. The plan is to have the stadium complete by 2023 with the Coliseum reduced to a low rise sports park, downsized to fit housing and a new tech hub. Sounds great, right? But there's no guarantee the A's will escape the Coliseum in 2023. As we've learned, the sad old concrete building has a way of staying alive, trapping its inhabitants like a charming haunted house. A haunted house whose locker rooms have flooded with sewage, but also offered a $7 hot dog and beer deal to its season ticket holders. The neighboring Warriors managed to finally get out of next door Oracle Arena in 2019. All they had to do was find a privately financed tract of land in Mission Bay that didn't need voter approval and, you know, win a couple championships with the super team. The real crux is that the pathetic A's don't have the same draw as the Warriors who found success 
at the perfect time. The A's don't win and they don't have the financial backing. The same tight-fisted ownership that necessitated Billy Bean's money ball has made it tougher for the A's to find a new home. And to date, not a speck of dirt has been shoveled on the new park. The project is still in the air. Oakland is a beautiful city overshadowed by San Francisco and they deserve to at least host the one sports team that stuck around. The Coliseum, for all its ugly beauty, will for sure one day collapse. But when all that concrete crashes to the ground and Mount Davis slips into the sea, it'll be the last words of a bygone era for stadiums. And until that day comes, thanks for the memories. Two out, nobody on, ninth inning. Bartlett's on deck. And Brayden turns, he throws, and it's swung on a ground ball to short. Taken there, Pennington's got it, he throws, a perfect game! Dallas Brayden has thrown a perfect game!